Hi, folks. Thanks for joining us. I am L.A. Marzulli, your intrepid host, and this is Questions with L.A. We'll be getting into your questions and so much more, but first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Collagen is often referred to as our modern-day fountain of youth, and for a good reason. Our body loses its natural ability to produce collagen as we age. This is the reason why we see a visible decline in our skin, hair, and nails. Supplementing collagen can help reverse those visible signs of aging, but we have to make sure we're getting it from the right source. This multi-collagen uses a unique blend of the top five critically most important types of collagen our bodies need to help bring back the youthfulness into our skin, hair, and nails. Folks, mix it into the morning drink once a day, that's what I do, and watch as your body re-energizes and rejuvenates itself from the inside out thanks to this powerful blend of collagen. If you've ever wondered how celebrities keep their skin, hair and nails glowing, now you know. Folks, order it today to get a bundle of benefits like VIP health and fitness coaching for life and a new downloadable report called The 14 Foods for Amazing Skin, completely free. Folks, please be sure to go to healthwithla.com, that's healthwithla.com, or click the link below for more information. Folks, um, you know, I'll do like 10 or 12 uh, questions. I don't have all the answers, nobody does, but I'll, I'll do my best, and if I don't know, I spend a little bit of time searching for an answer for you. But um, if you've got a question, shoot me an email, questions at lamarzuli.net, questions at lamarzuli.net. We have other emails. If you've got a UFO encounter or film of UFOs, that's UFO at LAMarzulli.net. UFO at LAMarzulli.net. If you've had a supernatural uh, experience, if you've had uh, a vision of the Lord or been taken in the rapture or just whatever, uh, had an encounter with a demon, that's supernatural at LAMarzulli.net. So there's really three different emails one is for questions, one is for, for UFOs, the other one is for supernatural uh, confrontations. Uh, this is from Andrew. Hey, LA, I'm currently watching your episode, Unbelievable Connection, where through Google Maps there is a straight line connection between America Stonehenge and the traditional site of Stonehenge, England. I currently live about 30 minutes from the Cahokia Mounds in an area which the early French settler named La Petite uh, Coates or the Little Hills. Our neighborhood is across a major highway from another neighborhood referred to as Indian Hills. Our neighborhood is referred to as Fox Hill, but both are known as Native American burial grounds. We even had a neighborhood park with a placard describing the mound builder Native Americans in the area, and we do indeed live on top of two mounded areas surrounded by very flat, low-lying areas. I'm wondering if there be a, could be a connection to Cahokia in this particular area, and would love to host you if you should come and research the area. Sure, our local historical society would have plenty of intriguing information about this particular area of hills that seem out of place along the Missouri and Mississippi River Valleys. I've been to Cahokia. Uh, you'll see that um, at the very end, we'll be at Calvary Church, Calvary Chapel Church, um, on June 9th, and that's very close to Cahokia. So I'll be right there. And by the way, I did e email you, Andrew if you're watching this, and uh, maybe we'll be able to hook up. But I'll be speaking Friday night, and then Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon. There are no repeats. We are looking into the possible connection from one of the standing stones in America Stonehenge to Cahokia. Now, let me just, let me just use this for a, a, uh, a prop here, if I can. I can go from point A to point B in a straight line. So I can connect any, any two points on the planet. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about in America Stonehenge, there's a circle. And you've got, let's say, A here, and the center of the hinge, X marks the spot. So now I've got two points, and then I go out, I go out to this. Let me, let me do that over again, because I, I messed up. Please forgive me, let me, let me try this one here. So if I draw a circle for America Stonehenge, I put an X in it out to the summer solstice standing stone, and I'll call that point A, and I draw a line out to, and see wherever it goes, we'll call this B. So there it is. Now I've got two points here. So these two points are fixed. Now I've got something, because that could go anywhere. And what we discover on an America Stonehenge is the connectivity between 
America Stonehenge and Stonehenge, England, between America Stonehenge and another one of the Standing Stones, which goes to Machu Picchu, Teotihuacan in Mexico, Chaco Canyon, the Canary Islands, and on and on it goes. In my opinion, and you've heard me say this before, I believe that this is the most astounding um, archaeological discovery of the 21st century. So I love this. This is a nice, pithy question. Very good. Pithy is good. This is from Douglas. L.A., my eyes have been open. Following you, I have a theory um, that the genetic tests for those foolish enough to submit those go to the Nephilim to a certain who to abduct next. Your thoughts, Shalom. Very interesting. I've heard this before, Doug. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, why would I want to give my DNA to, to find out, you know, what happens to it. That's, that's the deal. What happens to my DNA if I give a sample over to, um, like, one of those DNA tests, those genetic testing things? I get that. Uh, and that's the stuff of conspiracy theory. We don't know, but anything's possible. Anything's possible. Do I think they're looking at taking that information and handing it over to the grays or the tall whites, speculation. It's possible. Anything's possible. But I honestly believe that um, the grays, the tall whites, the, the entities that inhabit these craft, and you know where I come down on this. These are, in my opinion, the fallen angelic hosts of heaven. That's who they are. They have a very nefarious agenda. You know, I'll, I'll digress a little bit. I was up at the Jesse Marcel Jr. Library up in Montana, and Dr. Richard O'Connor was just a fantastic host, and we interviewed him and also Linda Marcel and Tim, Tim Alberino joined us talking about Roswell. That's number seven in our ongoing UFO series, and um, <clears throat> why that's still in production. Number, number six in the series, our cattle mutilation film, is in post-production, but I digress as usual. So what I'm, what I'm trying to get to here, um, th there seems to be a generational, they seem to follow generations. In other words, if your grandmother was abducted, let's say 60 years ago, the chances are one of your family members right now is being taken. They're, they're, and, and they already know this. And this is what is, is bothersome to me. And I've talked to abductees. I've talked about, with Dr. Roger Lear and other people about this. It's, it is very disturbing. They seem to know, without the genetic tests, where they're going. How do they do that? I don't know. Can they see into us? Very possible. But I don't know. But we know from abductees and from the abductee literature, John Mack and Dr. David Jacobs and others, that there seems to be a connection. The film Taken talked about that, where there was a generational uh, connection between the little girl at the very end of the film who was able to, to stop space, time, matter, and energy in ways that we defy our physics, at least what we know. So she's the end product of someone who's, in, who's contacted by a Foo Fighter at the end of World War II. The Foo Fighters were balls of light that appeared over not only um, allied Europe and Europe at the end of World War II, but also Japan. And they followed the B-17s and the fighters and the whole deal. And they called them Foo Fighters because they didn't know what they were. So isn't it interesting, in, in the film Taken, uh, Spielberg's production, which is a fantastic miniseries, by the way, it really outlines, in my opinion, the truth to a point. Then the product of this generational <clears throat> inbreeding shifts, and, it's, and it, I believe it's a foreshadow of what the Antichrist might do. The late Chuck Missler um, posited that the Antichrist would boast some sort of alien connection. Look, I could go down that rabbit hole for another half an hour and lecture on that. I, I think I've answered your question, but it's deep, folks, and none of us have the answers, but we know this. Their seed will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not cleave to them. Right here, Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. Seal up the words of this book, Daniel, until the time of the end. Men will run to and fro over the face of the earth. Knowledge will increase. That's where we are today. As I speak, men and women are running to and fro over the face of the earth. In planes, in cars, on motorcycles. No longer on horseback. That's for fun and games. So the prophecy of Daniel chapter 2 
Daniel's book is now unsealed and we can understand it. Their seed will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not cleave to them. All right, this is from Lisa. Uh, I just had a huge revelation when I was listening, watching L.A. Marzulli's conference, session two on the uh, Wow Faith Church YouTube channel. I had to email you. Towards the end of this video, one of the slides shows the narrative. Monkey evolves to modern man. Yes, I'm very familiar with that. That's sort of, uh, they take the Darwinian paradigm and then at the very end, there's this very large, overweight human being with a big gulp. So that's, you know, anyway. After all you had mentioned this, a notion popped into my mind. What if this is true from the evil one's perspective, from monkey to modern man? Because modern man is the evil one's hybrid creation. Is he not creating hybrids? Well, let me just stop right there. Um, we are we are not hybrids. We are made in the image and likeness of God. All of the human beings on this planet are in a fallen state. There's no doubt about that. That's why our Redeemer came. Our Redeemer is Jesus. And his work on the cross changes everything. The cross is literally is the center of time in both directions. Everything before the cross points to the advent of the Messiah. Everything after the cross points back to Calvary, where the blood is shed for you and for me. So we're made in the image and likeness of God. What is going on, and I just said this in the, in the previous question, in Daniel chapter 2, that's where we see the mingling of the seed. Once again, I will be in, 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 uh, in Missouri at a church there, Calvary Church. You can go on our website, lamarzuli.net. You can see it for yourself. And it's all, it's all, it's all about the seed. The Seed War, The Coming Great Deception, that's the title of a conference. The Seed War, The Coming Great Deception. Of course, we're speaking of Genesis 3.15. Genesis 3.15 sets up the rest of the biblical prophetic narrative, in my opinion. And if you want to see a great presentation on that, go to Calvary Church Jupiter on YouTube. Just Google that in the search engine. Calvary Church Jupiter. Watch the first session. They've got over 130,000 hits on that. There's a lot of great comments, but there's always a naysayer. So uh, if you're reading the comments, take that in consideration. It's amazing. Can't please all the people all the time, but there's a lot of great comments. And I just thank all of you for coming to that conference. I thank Pastor Dan and Cheryl for having us there. We're looking forward to Missouri. Uh, all about the seed conference, the seed war, uh, the um, the coming great deception, because that's what I call the whole UFO phenomenon, because it is the coming great deception. Once they show up, everything changes. This is from Gala. Hey, Ali, we recently started watching your shows. Well, thank you. I have for years had many of the same thoughts and ideas, but haven't spoken of them because of the reactions and weird looks I received from people I told them to. I'm reading in Philippians about how Christ took on the form of a man, and because of that, God is bestowing upon him the name above all names. While I was pondering that, I thought about how Satan tries to mimic everything that God does, and the thought occurred to me. Since the fallen angels can procreate with human women, do you think it's possible that Satan himself would procreate and that offspring might be the Antichrist? It sure would fit a lot of the descriptions of who and what he is. Thank you for your time. Keep up the good work, Gail. Absolutely. I realize there are people who vehemently disagree with that. You're entitled to your opinion. Um, but in my opinion, that the seed of the dragon goes into a woman. It is Rosemary's baby all day long, in my opinion. And it's the son of perdition. It's the literal seed of the dragon. Genesis 3.15, the seed of the dragon, the offspring of the dragon, will be at war enmity with the seed, the offspring of the woman. He will crush the dragon's head. That's the entire Bible, because that's the first prophecy that we get of the Proto-Evangelium, of Christ, of the Messiah, of the one who's going to come and crush the dragon's head. When did that happen? That happens on Calvary, where the blood is shed for you and for me, for all mankind, for everyone which is why I'm not a Calvinist. It's for everyone, for all, that all may come to the knowledge of God. I hope that answers your question. I recently saw, um, and this is from Brooke, I recently saw a segment you did regarding the network of, of the fallen. 
uh, had before the flood. That would be on our Arn the Trail of a Nephilim series that we do on Tuesday. We've been to all over the world, Saxe, Oman, Zambujuro, Portugal, Menga, Spain, Gilgar, Raphaim, Israel. By the way, the Israel tour is sold out. I'm sorry, we're probably we should get a list up for next year's tour. I, liked, I don't like two or three buses because it loses the intimacy. So I'm keeping it down to about 45, 47 people. I am talking to Aaron Lipkin about the tour and we're excited about it. And uh, for those of you who have signed up, you will get an email from me, very specific email of what to do, what to wear, and what we'll be doing. I, I don't like hopping in a bus, spending 20 minutes at a site, getting back in the bus and going. I like spending time at the sites, probing the sites, lecturing at the sites, and then having free time at the sites. Okay, I digress as usual. I'm sorry. This is from Brooke. I recently saw a segment regarding the work, the network of the fallen had before the flood. She's talking about um, number six in our Watchers series, the, the Secret Cosmic War. I have followed what Matthias De Stefano is doing, and it seems he is working to reestablish this network. Are you familiar with this? No, I am not. I'll have to Google that. Do you think it's the same thing? Is this going to open portals to bring back the ancient ones? And I will definitely check that out. The bottom line is this, uh, in, in, in my opinion. Yes, New Agers are trying to open up the gates. This is why we talked about this in our film, Amitrail of the Nephilim, Secrets of the Supernatural, number three. We show Hunbat's men and the Mayan elders at the Serpent Mound. What are they doing there? Hunbat's men knows about serpent energy. He's given his life when he was alive, passed away a number of years ago, to that serpent energy. He shows up there with the Mayan elders, the 13 crystal skulls. They perform a ritual to open the site back up. They also went to the Great Circle Mountain in Ohio. That's about three or four hours away from where the Serpent Mountain is. So now they're at the Circle Mountain and they're also performing a ritual there. Okay. Uh, this is from Shauna. Is it really possible or are these guys just hyping things up? That's the very th first thing I thought when I checked out this new uh, artificial intelligent app. So a friend of mine sent me a... She's wondering, basically the question is, um, why is, is this app, is this dangerous? Yeah, in my opinion. Because a friend of mine sent me something on L.A. Marzulli. Who is L.A. Marzulli? Now the bio that, that AI wrote got some things wrong, but it got a lot right. It was alarming. It was alarming. It's another reason, in my opinion, why the king has to return soon. We are in a window of time, literally, that is unprecedented. This is from Dana. Dear Alea, I was wondering if you had looked into high-frequency technology. I watched two very interesting videos about this phenomenon. The technology was used by many ancient cultures. Could this be fallen angel technology? The other video discusses the way musicians once used the, the, the solfeggio scale and changed to a more humble combination called the devil's interval to tune instruments. Yes, I'm aware of this. Um, on the Be Inspired channel on YouTube, check it out. The 528 hertz frequency. With the right frequency, anything is possible. So uh, then, he, then uh, Dana writes, also wondering if you tried contacting Dr. Nathaniel Jensen over at the Creation Museum concerning your Nephilim DNA. No, I have not. Uh, maybe I will check that out. Look, frequency is pretty amazing. And we can see that we're, that we know about modern science is sort of in the infancy of this. Everything in the universe has a frequency. It vibrates. It's vibrating. Everything has a frequency in which it, it vibrates. Molecules, atoms, everything is vibrating. Everything is moving. So, yeah, is that how the fallen angel technology um, used some sort of a frequency, uh, channeling the frequency to the stones and were able to carve them, lift them up? I don't know, but it's certainly possible. Lots of food for thought. That's why we keep open minds. And this is from uh, Jose Rojas. Thank you for sharing all of your knowledge. Thank you, Jose. Appreciate it for the kind words. I want to tell you about a dream I had a few weeks ago. It was so vivid. It felt like I never fell asleep. In the dream, I was taken by the hand by some entity. I felt no fear. In fact, I had been taken by a similar, if not the same entity, in another dream. It took me far into outer space where I could see the planets. The earth looked as if, as if it was desolate. Just like the moon. However, the moon was still orbiting around the desolate earth. 
Then I was shown another planet that was many times bigger than Earth, being moved into the position of the Earth. And the old Earth and Moon started orbiting around this new Earth. It looked just like our Earth, but many times bigger. The entity then took me down to this new Earth, and I was being held back from touching or standing on the ground. It was the most beautiful place I have ever seen in my life. It was, in my imagination, more beautiful than the Garden of Eden could have been. The sky was beautiful. The ambient, the ambiance was breathtaking. I could see two moons in the sky. Then I asked to be put down because I wanted to touch and smell the flowers and feel the earth beneath my feet. And the entity, the entity said, no, not yet. Next thing I knew, I was being swept away and coming back down to this earth. When I awoke, it was like my body was placed gently on my bed and suddenly I could feel the weight of my body again. And that is when I woke up. What do you think this was? Well, that's a really good question. You know, when we have dreams like this, it's, um, what do we do with them? You know, thank you for sharing that. It, it, for me, were you shown the future? Possibly. I don't know. We take things like that, put them on the back burner. And I realize that's really not an answer for you, Jose, but that's the best I can come up with. Because you had a dream, you were taken someplace. Next time, if it ever happens again, challenge the entity. Ask the entity this, did Jesus come in the flesh? If he says anything other than, yes, Jesus came in the flesh, if it's like, well, Jesus came in the flesh, but you know that it's from the dark side. Make sense? Uh, question for L.A. Thanks, L.A., for all you do with unique message and outreach. Well, thank you, Jack. I really appreciate it. What if the pre-trib rapture doesn't occur? The rapture occurs after the start of tribulation. Wouldn't that cause many Christians to lose faith? because they had invested so much in the, in the pre-trib. And that's, and I, and I get that. Um, and, and a lot of, and towards the end you go, you know, Christians have become very dogmatic. Look, I am staunchly pre-trib. We're not appointed to wrath. But the point is, how much are we going to see before we're taken up? We're seeing things that I thought we would never see. The burgeoning revealing of the UFO phenomena. It's like every single week. I, I'm not running out of material, folks. I'm not. Every single week, news media shows us something about whether it's cattle mutilations or UFOs on the moon or Robert Salas coming forth from the Maelstrom uh, Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Base. We broke that story years ago in our Watcher series where nine intercontinental ballistic missiles were shut off like that. What are we to think of all this? Something is going on. Um, I don't know how much we're going to see before we're taken up. Now you've got AI. And we're in the spirit of Baphomet. It's the age of Baphomet. That's all I'll say about that. And Baphomet is, is, is a chimera. Head of a goat, body of a man, breasts like a woman. I mean, you know, it's, 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 got, it's got wings. I mean, seriously, that's the spirit of the age. That's all I'll say about that. I hope that answers your question. Last question for today. This is from Linda. I'm wondering if the Bible talks about a person's spirit being able to attach to a person at the moment of death. So she talks about her father and her mother. She took care of them for decades before they passed. And she found herself doing little things that only her father would have done. Okay, I hear what you're saying. I understand that. I don't think the spirit of your, your, your deceased father attaches itself to you. I think what's happening, when we... When someone were around like you were with your father or your mother over a period of decades, like you say in your post, um, whether you're aware of it or not, you're looking at them and you see their idiosyncrasies. You see the things that they do, the way they arrange things. And then you might find yourself doing that. It's not their spirit doing it. It's your memory kind of thinking of what they did. And you've then taken that because there's a loss, maybe subconsciously, you're taking those little idiosyncrasies that your parents did and incorporating them into your daily routine as a way of kind of holding on to them. And that's just conjecture on my part. There's no scientific basis behind that that I'm aware of, but it does make sense. Folks, I will be in just, just a couple of weeks here. It's coming up June 9th and 10th at the Calvary Church in Missouri. You want to check that out, Riverbend. Go to lamarzulli.net, lamarzulli.net. You want to sign up for that sooner than later, please do that. Um, that's going to be a hoot. For, and there's, I'll be presenting four presentations, no repeats. Friday night, of course, is uh, the primer to all of this. Saturday morning, we talk about the Fatima apparitions and why I truly believe it was a UFO event. 
and not Mary of the Bible, then Saturday morning, right at, directly after that, we'll take a short break, and I will talk about the Crop Circle film, which is number five. Then after that, of course, Saturday afternoon, deep dive into the manifestation of Genesis 315, the seed war. And of course, my, my primer on Friday night starts at Genesis 315, because that sets up the rest of the biblical prophetic narrative. If you have a question, questions at lamarzuli.net, questions at lamarzuli.net. If you've had a UFO experience, we're looking for pictures. UFO at lamarzuli.net, UFO at lamarzuli.net. Have you had a supernatural confrontation, a supernatural experience? Did angels save your life? Did, did a demon manifest in your room? Supernatural at lamarzulli.net. Supernatural at lamarzulli.net. And of course, if you've got questions, keep them pithy. Keep them short. L, uh, that's questions at lamarzulli.net. Questions at lamarzulli.net. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with yet another episode of Supernatural Confrontations.